Hey, hello guys. Well, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, what in the world are you doing with the 48 Chevy? And I'll go over all that. There's some story behind it and so forth, um, but not until the June episode of The Humble Mechanic, which is coming up in a couple weeks. Um, so if you're seeing this much later and you want to know why I have the 48 Chevy back, um, look for June, the Humble Mechanic 2023 video, and I'll probably tell you the reason. But, be that as it may, I have it back to do a little bit more work on, and it became not necessary, but uh, possible that I could do at least one more how-to video on one of these old 40s cars. So what we're going to do is, I probably showed adjusting the brakes, um back when I was making the series, uh, but we're going to adjust the parking or emergency brake with you as well. So let's get in here. So back when I was uh, going through this car and getting it ready to go, doing the brakes, we kind of deemed the, the parking brake or the emergency brake, I don't want to say non-essential, but non-essential for now. Um, and then since then, uh, soon after he got it, he realized, the owner realized, yeah, we better, uh, get that going, which, yeah, I, I should have just done it, just, just should have done it, but the problem was, um, you know, obviously we had this, all, all four of the service brakes, all four wheels, um, up to snuff and ready to go, and, the left-hand side of the parking brake was functional. The right-hand side here was missing parts. So our little S-shaped bracket. So on the other end of that, you can see the clevis down in there. And then this bracket is a hook point down in there. That clevis is the end of the parking brake cable. And then this hooks on hinges up here. And then we have the rod going across to the other shoe here. So when you pull on the parking brake handle, this bracket pivots forward at the bottom. It's hinging, of course, on this bolt. And then this, this rod with the spring is transferring the movement to the upper end of this shoe. So because of that, both of your shoes are spreading out and grabbing the drum. These two vital pieces were missing. And I have a 48 sedan at home, but I didn't want to rob parts. And uh, I just hadn't looked into um, eBay or salvage yards or whatever trying to find parts. Uh, I think that would be kind of a frustrating ordeal. Um, so now that it came back, I just buckled down and uh, did it. I manufactured the two parts. And... Um, basically all I had to do was copy what's on the left side except uh, where there are offsets in the two pieces do it the opposite direction. Now one scenario that might arise if you are doing all new brakes um, is you get everything replaced, repaired. These, your adjustment um, is here at the end of the, the cylinders of course, um, but you may not be able to get your drum on. Obviously, your shoes are too spread out. Um, so it may become necessary to go under the car and back off the adjustment for the parking brake cables. Um, let's just crawl under there and I'll show you that. The manual, of course, does recommend adjusting both. If you work on the service brakes, readjust the parking brake. Um, everything is just greasy down here. Um, but these two cables, the spring is your return, part of your return spring for the parking brake. And, of course, these are your cables. And they have threaded rod end here. And uh, that's your adjustment. So I have them both backed off. And the reason for that is uh, if there is any tension on here, premature tension, um, you'll be spreading those shoes out and your drum is not going to want to go on. Or it will be providing a false reading 
as far as getting your service brakes adjusted correct. So right now I have absolutely no adjustment done on the parking brake. So we're going to set our uh, adjustment for the service brakes and that is done by sticking a screwdriver through the, certain, the holes, the access ports here on the back of the backing plate. And it's a little difficult, especially if you have it supported by jack stands on the axle. Um, the frame tends to get in the way, you know. I suppose a stubby sh screwdriver would be better. But turning it clockwise is going to get you, is going to adjust them out. So they're going to turn opposite directions, obviously, because clockwise from uh, the opposite ends is opposite so all right i'm going to double check here make sure my drum goes on nice and easy and spins nice and easy for the most part so i'm going to be sticking my screwdriver through the access hole back here and this front one i'm going to be turning i'm going to be moving the uh, screwdriver handle down to adjust out and the back one, I'm going to be starting down and going up to adjust out. If I can remember that. Kind of hard to keep track of it. So, find this. Start up, go down. And you want to do this till it's starting to drag. Sometimes I just like to take the drum on and off, but this really is the better method. All right, I switched to a stubby screwdriver just to help my sanity out a little better, but that started dragging there. So now I'm going to go back counterclockwise uh, four notches. So one two, and I'm looking at this little spring steel tab on these cogs here. Three, four. So that shrunk it four notches. Okay, now I'm going to go, I need to go clockwise, so I'm going to start up on this one and turn it down until it gets hard to turn again. it starts dragging again. Excuse me. Okay, my rear one started getting difficult to spin, so I'm going to go back the opposite direction. One, two, three, four. All right. So hopefully that's easy to spin. I should have good pedal. Now we can go under and adjust our cables. Alright, so I don't know if this is obvious, but you at least need to have drums on the back um, so that your shoes don't just keep spreading apart. But what you want to do, of course I have a whole lot of slop in this right now, but you want to pull on the cable and I may need to get my uh, re reset my body here so my foot can be against the back axle. Let me do that. All right, because you're basically fighting against all the spring tension in the drum assembly there. But my uh, my parking brake handle in the passenger compartment there is released. There's no tension anywhere, and I just want to grab the cable and pull until I have all, uh, what do they call it in the manual? You feel a definite stop? Something like that. But basically, we want to remove all spring tension 
on this cable. So once I have that, I'm going to adjust my front nut here on my threads. You know what? It's not. Let me adjust the back one up to the point of where that's all gone. So I don't have to hold this the entire time. Okay. Now I can prevent this from turning on me and uh, tighten it up to that point. So basically what you're doing is you're removing all the spring travel um, in that parking brake linkage in the drum assembly there. You're not spreading you're not spreading the shoes apart necessarily. Um, at least you better not be, but uh, you're removing any spring travel in the parking brake mechanism. That way when you pull the handle to engage the parking brake, it's just going to do it immediately. I wonder if I have a vice grip here. Yeah, I do. Way over there. Okay, there's one. Remove the spring tension on this one. Everything is so gummed up with old gear oil. It's a fun job. Everyone should try it at least once. Almost there. Okay. Turn this nut. And we'll take just one last quick look down here. Um, now you want to make sure before you do any of this, um, if you've had this, had this torn apart or you're kind of working on a project like this where you're just getting it up and running again, um, you know, you have a lot of moving parts in here that have pivot points and you want to make sure that it's not all worn out, wallered out because that's going to certainly affect what you got going on. You got a rod up here which goes to your parking brake handle. There's a clevis here with a pin pulling on this lever. It's got a hook point up here that it pivots on. And then you got three things here on a single bolt that are all pivoting. You know, they're, they all need to have uh, freedom of movement. Um, certainly you need the spring. Your cables need to be in good working order. So on and so forth. But let's go up and see how we did. So to prove to you that I'm not just whistling Dixie or talking into my hat, as they used to say, um, obviously pulling on those cables and tightening them down, I still have wheel movement. You know, there's free freedom in the brakes, the binders yet, both sides. So we'll pull our handle. Gets nice and tight. And, I don't think you saw that, <laughs> and so is the wheel. Won't budge there. Won't, man, won't budge there either. Okay. Release our brake. 
and we're free there. And we're free there. And my service brakes are nice and tight. Hold well. So we can check this off the old list again. There we go again, guys. Just a short, fun little how-to video on the old 48 again. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know. Hopefully it was helpful in some way to some people. Um, like I said at the beginning, watch the June 2023 Humble Mechanic video if you want to know more about why I'm working on this thing again. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you. So God bless you. See you on the next one. Quiet, you guys. Quiet.